This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Hello and welcome back to The Watch Guys. This week I've got something really, really special. A watch that I've been waiting for for over two years it's one of the grails. It's one of the ones that I simply never thought I was actually going to get, but it's here. That's right, folks. This week's watch is the Rolex Daytona Yellow Gold Green Dial. I cannot believe it's mine at last. This is it folks. This is the 18 karat yellow gold Daytona with the bright green dial. This is one of the most highly prized watches in the current range. There's been rumors of discontinuation all throughout 2020, but it hasn't happened yet. So I've managed to get one at last and I'm incredibly happy about it, as you can probably tell. And in honor of this watch, and in preparation for making this very episode, I bought myself a green jumper to go with the bright green dial. That's dedication for you, Rolex. Hope you appreciate it. So this week, I'm gonna tell you all about this very special Daytona, what makes it special, a little bit about the history, obviously an unboxing, and why I love it, and why I have waited for it so long, and been so excited to get it. All that, is coming up soon. Before we get deep, deep into this gold Rolex and into the history of the Daytona, let's do a quick wristwatch check. And under the Rolex green jumper this week, I am wearing my Grand Seiko Elegance Spring Drive. This is SBGY003. It's a beautifully crafted, incredible looking Grand Seiko. It's steel and it's a limited edition watch there were 700 made and this is number 666. And just because my name is Damien, don't read too much into that. This is the Rolex I've been wanting more than any other. If you'd have asked me to have thrown away all the watches on my current Rolex list and just keep this one, I would have done it. Now, if you remember, this watch was made famous in the Hodinkee Talking Watches 2 with John Mayer. Now that dude knows a thing or two about watches and Rolexes in particular, and he highlighted this as one of the future stars, one of the watches that people will look back on and think, why did I not get one of those? And ever since he uttered those words, the values of these have been steadily climbing and they've been harder and harder to get. So cheers for that, Mayor. You've probably contributed to more angst than I've ever had waiting for a watch because I thought I was never gonna get one of these. I thought they were gonna be discontinued and I'd have had to have paid a fortune to get one. But fortunately, I've managed to get one at list from my favorite Rolex dealer, Lanes in Southampton. Shout out to you guys because you have delivered. So this Rolex Cosmograph Daytona reference 116508 is one of the hottest watches you can buy and it's still on sale as of November 2020 but it may well be discontinued in 2021 but then they did say that about this year. It's got of course the reliable 4130 movement in it that all Daytonas have. It's a self-winding watch, it's 40 millimeters and it is solid yellow gold and remember that's a gold that's smelted by Rolex themselves. It's got a 72 hour power reserve and the bezel is engraved with a tachymetric scale. It's got an 18 karat yellow gold case and also an 18 karat oyster bracelet. This is very much in the old style of Daytona so as you can see here you've got the crown in the middle position and then two screw down pushers, the top one for controlling the start and stop of the stopwatch and then the bottom one to reset it. Here's a little history on the Daytona itself. Rolex first introduced the chronograph cosmograph in 1963. Reference number 6239, here it is. It was designed for racing drivers, which meant it had the tachymetric scale on it, which would allow you to measure speed over distance. 
As you can see, it had a black dial with contrasting white subdials, and it was a manual winding watch. Originally, the Cosmograph was called the Le Mans, but after Rolex became the official timekeeper of the Daytona Beach Speedway, it later rechristened it the Daytona. The Daytona International Speedway, incidentally, at the time when it was built in 1959, was the fastest circuit in America. It was also quite likely that this was called the Daytona to help ingratiate Rolex into the American market, and it certainly did that. Rolex Daytona watches are still given to the winners of the Daytona race and many races around the world, even today. In 1965, the Daytona got screw down chronograph pushers rather than the exposed ones. That was to help water resistance, and it also led to the fact that Oyster then came onto the dial. Remember at this point, all hand-wound Daytonas use the Calibre 72 Vijou movement. Over the 60s and 70s, there were various important references in the Daytona bloodline, including the Paul Newman dials, which have achieved almost mythical status. You can tell a Paul Newman dial by the fact that it uses square blocks in the subdials and a different font. It also has an additional seconds counter around the inside of the dial itself, right up flush with the bezel. Then in 1988 came the first big change for the Daytona and it was the self-winding 4030 movement, which put an end to hand-wound Daytonas and ushered in a new era of ease of use. This was also the time that superlative chronometer appeared on the dial and the new 40 millimeter case came with new hands, new hour markers and larger subdials. These models are now known as the Zenith Daytonas because they featured a modified version of the Zenith Primero movement. Then just 12 years later in the year 2000, Rolex ditched that Zenith movement and brought in their own in-house 4130 movement, which is what persists even to this day. The 4130 had 60% less components than the previous movement and also actually had Daytona written on it. And then in 2016 came the current ceramic bezel version of the Daytona in white dial and black dial form. Rolex continues to sponsor many of the most important races on the calendar, including the 24 hour of Le Mans, Formula One, and of course the Daytona race itself. And it also has brand ambassadors like Sir Jackie Stewart and Mark Webber. Rolex has remained fully ingrained in the motorsport world since the 50s. And it's hard to imagine a race without Rolex banners all over the place as the cars whiz by. Now remember, this was launched in 2016 at Baselworld, which was when the new ceramic bezel Daytonas were also launched. And as a result, this one hardly got a look in. Same with the blue dial, white gold Daytona. No one paid any attention. And in fact, they were not loved at all at the time. You could have actually picked them up in dealer's windows back then. It was all about the new ceramics. And, and of course, the new ceramics have shot up in value and are still hard to get. I mean, I still don't have a ceramic Daytona. So that just goes to prove that I don't get every Rolex really easily. I'm still waiting too. But the popularity of this only really took off after that John Mayer video. And it's incredible to think that that had such a profound effect on the market for these Daytonas. Since then, the price has rocketed up to north of £40,000, $50,000 in many cases. And that can pretty much all be attributed to the Mayer effect. So why have I gone so crazy a bonkers over this watch. Why have I been waiting patiently? Why have I been getting increasingly angst ridden that I didn't have one in my hands? In the flesh, it is just the most sumptuous, luxurious, opulent thing that you can imagine. In terms of current model Rolexes, this one feels special. It feels historic. That combination of that particular Rolex shade of yellow gold that they do so well, that incredible bright green dial applied to that famous Daytona configuration. And also, if you look closely, you've got Daytona written in red on the green, which shouldn't work but it does. And also you've got a splash of red on the inner part of the subdials. It's such an evocative looking thing. On the wrist, again, it shouldn't work. I mean, look at me, but it does. Obviously it's a Daytona, so you can't read the time, that's a given, but as a piece of jewelry that can be worn 
by men and women, it's really, really special. Now, obviously being solid gold, it's a pretty heavy wear on the wrist, so it's not for everyone. So this is a 40 millimeter, it's not too large. Whip out a few links from here and it can be worn on either a lady's or a man's wrist. It's got all the hallmarks of a Rolex anniversary special edition watch. The thing you notice when you hold it in your hands, and you really do need to hold them to appreciate them, is just how many different color variations there are on that green as the light hits it. Sometimes it looks black, sometimes it's a dark olive green, sometimes it's an Amazon tree frog green. It changes so much under different light conditions. But I think this has a real legendary status about it. It feels epic, it feels historic, and I do truly believe that this will be looked back on as one of those iconic models that Rolex created in its modern era. No one knows how many of these exist. I suspect a lot more than you'd think, but there are people that say only several hundred of these were made. I don't believe that for a second. I think there's a lot more than that. But either way, it's still a very short run supply watch in the scale of Rolex's other models. And now it's time to enter Unboxo Vision and let me take you through the full unboxing of this gold Rolex Daytona. Standard Rolex box, I'm quite surprised that it doesn't have the double-sized box that you get with the Platinum Daytona. There's the receipt from uh, Lanes, just to show that I bought it from there. See, nothing special at all. Nothing special for a watch of this magnitude, which I find quite surprising. Inside the Rouge Leather Effect green box, which we're all familiar with, there it is. Can you believe it? Look how excited I am. Just amazing. Inside the hidden pocket at the back, we have the standard uh, instruction manual. So it takes you through the Cosmograph Daytona, how to operate the watch. Obviously, I'm fairly familiar with that, but many of you won't be if it's your first Daytona. And then here we've got the new style registration document for Rolex. And also there's your service book in different languages. And there we go, lifted off the cushion. Heavy, heavy watch, obviously, as it's solid gold. Oyster strap in gold as well. Look at that. What an absolutely gorgeous watch. Do you see what I mean about the dial changing color in different lights? Lovely. So what's the buying story with this watch? Well, I guess it's a pretty simple one. It is, after all, a modern Rolex that's part of the current range, but you would not believe how difficult it was to get it. I know many of you think that because I've got lots of Rolexes and because I have a good relationship with my authorized dealer that I just get everything first. Anything I want, I just have to choose it and it arrives the next day. No, that is not the case. I have to wait just like you do. I've got my watches on my list. I put them down and I sit back and I wait. And every now and again, I check in and see how things are going and find out if any of them are on the way. I don't pester but I do stay in touch. And this watch I added to my list over two years ago, and it was only really the rumors of it being discontinued that caused me quite a lot of grief. So really what I did is I went into Lanes in Southampton. I said, this is a watch that I'm really after. They obviously explained to me that it's not just an everyday one. It's not gonna arrive anytime soon. And I said, well, I'm fully prepared for that. Put me down for one and we'll see what happens. So at first I was pretty cool. And then as the months and years started to tick by, I started to get a bit nervous and then a bit antsy. I was not sure that I was actually gonna get a brand new one of these. And I seriously did think that I was gonna have to go to the gray market and pick one up at a sizable premium. And incredibly, round about the middle of this year, I got the word that one had been put aside for me and that it was on the way. And when I saw that image appear on WhatsApp of this watch in my dealer's hands, ready for me to collect, Honestly, I almost died. I was so excited. I was like a giddy schoolboy. And you know what? Until it was actually in my hands, I didn't believe it. I still didn't believe I was gonna get one. But now that it is, I could not be happier. So thank you, Lanes. Thank you, Andy, for sorting this out. Now, despite the fact that this watch has increased in value, so list for this is just under 30,000 pounds, and I could easily sell it today for 40 to 45,000 pounds. I'm not going to, obviously, because I've waited so long, and this is pride of place in my collection. This is probably one of the only modern Rolexes that I would class as a grail, and now, finally, I've got it. So this, my friends, is going nowhere. Now, obviously, because it's one of my watches, take a good look at it, because it will never look this pristine again. 
I plan to wear this watch a lot. I know I shouldn't, especially not in London, so don't worry, I won't be doing that. But I do believe this is something that should be worn on more than special occasions. So as a consequence, this beautiful, shiny, brand new gold case and bracelet is soon to be scratched to f So there you are, this is it. This is the Rolex 18 karat yellow gold Daytona with the green dial, the one that everyone wants. This is one of my grails and I finally got it. I really hope you enjoyed this week's episode and my unveiling of this watch. Obviously I gave you a sneak peek in my previous episode, but I thought it really deserved a big episode to show it to you and to show you just how I feel about this watch. If you like what I'm doing on the watchguys.tv, please subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 10,000 subscribers and I'm really excited about that. Also, uh, please leave comments and likes on all the episodes that you watch. You'll notice that I read all the comments and I do reply to many of them. In fact, some of you that have said, oh, I bet he doesn't reply to this and then have got a reply. Ha ha ha, you see, I am paying attention. So thanks for watching this episode and there will be another Watch Guys episode next week. 